Thank you, Trevor Harris, for sitting through that quarterback of the Edmonton Elks. Uh, one half of our poll question today, it is for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, who will lead Alberta in passing yards this year? And uh, it's about 50-50 between yourself and Bo. How you doing, Trevor? I'm great, man. I thought I uh, actually see this shirt and this. I thought you'd appreciate this pretty <laughs> nice. good, huh? Yeah! Where does a guy get a bad boy like that? I had this made my... Uh, my aunt makes shirts, and so I thought it was a pretty crafty uh, thought by somebody, and so I, I'm, I had her make one for me. Write that down. That's really we gotta good. Get her, we got to get her on the part of the corporation USA. here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, USA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trevor, hey, before we look ahead and talk about quarantine, we were looking up yardage from last season here. You had a fine campaign <laughs> in 2019. Fine. Uh, how are you feeling about boosting those totals this year? Uh, I'm to me, to me, Rod, and I, I'm, it's just about lifting up my teammates. Um, the numbers that I put up don't really mean a whole lot to me. And I know people say that is cliche, but I honestly don't really care. I just, I want my receivers to have their best years. I want my running backs to have their best years. I want my O line to feel good about the protecting they're giving and, uh, you know, get rid of the ball quick for them and be able to avoid things if I can. And, put us in good situations and that's what kind of drives me in the off season is how can I kind of make things easier for my teammates and uh and you know with being you know using motions being able to create matchups using cadence whatever we can do um I try and do everything I can so that I can ensure my teammates have their best year and that's that's really what it's about for me and uh to me last year was just uh it was unfortunate that you know I had to miss five basically six games so uh tough in that regard but at the same time like I'm just thankful to be back in Canada playing some football, man. Well, you make some good points there about your yardage because the receivers do a lot of the work, too. And I was thinking about you when the Jelly Man re-signed. I was starting to worry a little bit about Greg Ellingson. You two have some sort of je ne sais quoi. Do you remember that from your Ottawa days? That means I don't know what you two have. What is it that you two have? I don't know. You don't have to ever have to worry about Greg Ellingson going somewhere else. I'll always, I'll always invade and impede and make sure he 82 stays, stays with me. Um, he's, he's one of those guys. He's dependable. He's tough as nails. That's what people don't realize about Greg Ellingson is, uh, people talk about the yardage. He's had, I think 5,000 yard seasons in a row and probably six, seven, eight coming up six, seven, eight, nine, however many he's going to play. Um, what people don't talk about is if you come watch Greg Ellingson day two practice 12, it doesn't matter you're going to see him running his tail off and that's who he is. And um, he sets, he sets a culture in that receiver room. And as one of the leaders in there, you know, along with him and D walk and Armani and Devon and uh, the list goes on of the receivers that we have here uh, that we're really excited about seeing, you know, how we can kind of gel together and get this uh, cohesiveness rolling. Um, we're excited about it. And, uh, but what people don't see about Greg Ellingson is, is how hard he works every single day. He's a pro, a pro's pro. I'm so glad to see him come back to the CFL because, I, like I say, I was worried there. Okay, our viewers have uh, chimed in, Trevor, a lot from Winnipeg. John Ohm in Winnipeg. Ohm says, great shirt, Trevor. That's a winner. From Rick Ressenthaler, Elks season ticket holder for over 30 years here. Go Elks. Best of luck to win it all, Trevor. From James in Borden, Manitoba, the Bombers are coming for you. Big Willie going to put you on your back. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, hey, I'm, those are, that's, that's music to my ears, man. And last year when I'm going through my nutrition course and personal trainer course and trying to just train in my house, quarantine, I, I welcome that. You know, I can't wait. I'm excited for that. So, you know, I go from rolling my eyes to people talking crap to me saying, let's go, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike Blackbird, Argo fan, watching from Toronto, says, I was sad to see you leave Toronto. That seems like a century ago. Do you ever think oh, about it that? Does. Um, yeah. I do. I do. Actually, somebody asked me about it the other day uh, on the team when we had our 15 minutes of yard time. Um, <laughs> they asked me, you know, what happened in Toronto? Like, and I kind of just explained, I'm like, man, that Ricky Ray, it, you know, Hall of Famer, man. It's kind of hard to turn the page from that. if You know, Ricky's going to be healthy going into the next year. And um, so, you know, it's one of those things I understood. Uh, it was tough leaving Toronto, obviously. Uh, it was tough for me to leave Scott uh, Milanovic and uh, a big adoration of, of him. And so, uh, but Obviously, you know, God works in, in the ways and uh, that he wants things to work out for. And uh, I wouldn't trade the path that I've been on for anything. I've been able to kind of come across teammates to 
to impact them and love the teammates and, and grow as a person, as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a Christian. And, uh, you know, so I've been thankful. He works in mysterious ways, but it always seems to work out, doesn't it, Trevor? It certainly worked out for you. Um, really good questions here. I, here's one from me. Who gets the credit for having you, Ricky Ray, and Zach all in the same quarterback room? All right, Scott Milanovich. Um, it's really about how he develops quarterbacks. Uh, him, Jamie Elizondo, Jason Moss. Uh, Marcus Brady, you want to talk about an all-star coaching staff, go to that 2013 uh, staff we had, you know, they, they, we had those, those four, we had uh, McAdoo, we had O'Shea, we had Orlando Steinhauer, Chris Jones, uh, Ed Filion. I mean, you want to talk about an all-time coaching staff, that 2012 coaching staff was crazy. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, Scott just does a tremendous job uh, developing quarterbacks. He understands, you know, the, the psyche, the mental game, he's played the position and uh, him and Jamie and Jay, uh, Jay Moss, and along with Marcus and all the coaches I've had have been tremendous at that. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have talked to him a whole lot, but Chris Jones told me he lived on a boat that season somewhere around Toronto. And I said, where did you, I said, where did you get your mail? And he goes, I didn't get mail. <clears throat> it went to his, <laughs> to his home in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Anyways, uh, Mick Gonzalez is watching in Toledo. He says, I have that exact same T-shirt, hashtag USA. From uh, ESPN Radio in Toledo, Ohio, uh, where they, I thought. yeah, where they where they uh, where they watch on the Buckeye cable system on Game Plus Television out there. Uh, <laughs> all great questions here. Jonathan Kinder's a new viewer of ours. He's in Kansas City. He says, "I wonder what Trevor would say from a quarterback point of view. The biggest difference between American and Canadian football." Oh, the biggest is a tough one, but, you know, 13 guys or 12 guys instead of 11, you know, you've got the field goal post in the front. I would say the biggest difference for me is is three downs instead of four because it changes the entire strategy of a game. Um, it's it's a little bit tougher to take shots unless you're, uh, you know, you're rolling the dice saying we're okay being in second and long. Um, so I'd say that I'd say that three downs is different. And the truth is, my first year, uh, we scored on our first possession that I played in a preseason next drive it was second and something and i missed a throw and i just heard scott go punt it and i was like golly he is real mad we're punting on third down and i kind of just said forgot i was like (laughs) so yeah pretty big difference i'll never forget as a canadian kid staying in an american hotel i was playing a video game and i was punting on third down all the time was i mean why is the punter not out here i had to switch it to punt i was playing an american football game dumb canadian kid uh colin mcanalty is watching in ottawa and he says, with your right tackle, Colin Kelly, going out yesterday with a torn peck and Derek Dennis opting out of playing this season, are you concerned with your edge protection this year? That's, that's been the advantage to being here in Edmonton and having Brock Sunderland and Jamie uh, put together this roster is they put together depth. Uh, we sure are going to miss Colin Kelly. I think he's one of the premier, if not the premier, right tackle in uh, Canadian Football League. And so... Uh, it's difficult. It's always going to be a tough loss when you lose guys. There's a reason they're, they're your starters, but um, you know, they've done a tremendous job with the depth here. And uh, I think we'll have some young guys step up, maybe move some pieces around on the O-line, uh, whatever they decide to do. But I have a full faith in the staff here and, and the roster they put together on so many levels. I'm telling you, Trevor, there's a flood of, flood of questions coming in from CFL fans here. You're, you're a very popular guy. Craig Smith, our director of we'll scouting. We'll go rapid fire here. Yeah, I'm going to do it. If you can, he says, Craig Smith, our director That's of scouting, good. says, how long did it take to get used to the extra guy in the secondary? I would say a full year. A full year? Sorry, Clark was talking to me. One year? Yep. I would say, I would say a full year uh, until you were able to kind of grasp all the different coverages, because once you add that other guy, the amount of coverages people can play is geometrically more. And we kind of went through the coverages as a quarterback unit on our teams meeting the other day. And we went through probably 60 coverages. And I was like, I started listing coverages that they didn't list. And there was about 40 or 50 more. And it's just, it's, it's insane to think about the amount of coverages that you can see. Uh, from Jeff Cabellos in Winnipeg. What was it like playing in the Arena League? Fast break football. It's it's uh, it's one of those deals where it's like if you don't score on the possession. I remember the first game of the year, our quarterback threw five touchdowns. And I was like, I was a backup then. <laughs> I was like, man, you balled. And he's like, ah, oh, man. He's like, I thought he was just being humble. I was like, bro, you threw five tugs. What do you mean? 
And he's like, just go look at the other quarterbacks like that play tomorrow. And it was like eight touchdowns, nine touchdowns, seven touchdowns. And I was like, golly. So it's, there's a very, very small amount of coverage that can play there. And, uh, very small amount of looks you're going to get. And so there's typically, you know, a winner on every play and they've got the one guy in high motion. So it's, it's different. It's, it's a lot easier for sure. Mike Blackbird, uh, Argos fan says, Oh, Trevor's in the shotgun for questions. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, Brady in Muskoka, Ontario says favorite stadium to play in. Sask. Hey, how about that? Oh, aside from, aside from Commonwealth, I love playing at Sask. The fans like, they know everything about you. They look up your your history and and they talk to you. But they're not like they're not overly aggressively rude there like they are in Hamilton. But uh, in in Sask, it's just a great atmosphere. Aside from Commonwealth, obviously, I love playing here, and I I really adore playing in uh, playing at TD Place as well. So I would say Western side aside from Commonwealth would be Sask, and then I love playing in Ottawa in the East. Oh, Ottawa is so amazing. It's interesting what they say about those north side stands having to be torn down, which is a recommendation. Not a, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Bob in Grand Prairie, Alberta says, have a great year, Trevor. We know you will. Grand Prairie is with you. And by the way, about Hamilton, Appreciate here's the you, thing. Bob. Yeah, thanks, Bob. They don't like me in Hamilton, Trevor, but that's okay. I'll survive. But the thing in Saskatchewan, they respect you and what you do. And Hamilton, they don't care who you are, what you do, what you stand for. That, and that's not saying they're necessarily rude, but they don't care, right? Like the most vile things come out of the stands. In yeah, Hamilton. they get Let's personal. Let's be honest. Right. They get personal. Right. Yeah. The, the Sask fans, they, they chirp you about football, and, and, and it makes it fun. Like they try and get in your head. They, they flirt with the line really well there. Uh, Mandy in Edmonton wants to know, how I'm not sure where the question went. It's I gotta dig it for a bit. Basically, are you easing back into your workout routine? We all know what happened here yesterday. You heard about it with the four Achilles tendon yeah. pulls. Nobody wants that to happen. Um, how are you easing into day one of training camp on Saturday? Um, you know, I brought I brought an ARP machine with me, and and that's been able to kind of keep me sweating. Like I don't know if you know much about the ARP machine. It's got like six patents on it in terms of the way it can stimulate your muscles, and I've been I've been working on that quite a bit. And, you know, doing blood flow for recovery, I've been doing a lot of mobility work, some body weight training. And that was one of the reasons I actually got my uh, my personal trainer license and nutrition degree was to try and learn more about the human body and how I could, you know, mobilize the body and keep it t- uh, keep it loose and those sorts of things in situations like this. And I've been able to put that to use uh, throughout this week. But um, it's it's obviously a very, very tough move. Uh, the CFL pulled, you know, with us sitting in hotels for six or seven days being confined to these four walls and then going out there and, you know, putting in some hardcore training. Cause when you get around the guys, you you naturally level up a tad and uh, you know, you just got to make sure you're really careful in these moments. And obviously just sick to my stomach for people like Larry Dean, one of my great friends in this league, I love that guy. And um, even a couple guys in Montreal from what I've heard. So uh, hopefully the CFL does some smart things and, and collaborates here and starts talking a little bit about what we can do immediately to, to make sure that's not happening. Well, we wish uh, good health to you and all your teammates, Trevor, and I appreciate the time. Always great chatting with you, and we'll see you on the field soon. Thank you. Likewise. Appreciate you, Rod. Always enjoy your time. Thank you, buddy. Edmonton Elks quarterback, Trevor Harris, number seven, who had a tremendous sim season, by the way. Oh, he was good in our there, video too. Games. Yes, oh, he yeah. was. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.